So this is another interesting question which relates to the concept of gauge R on R. So the question goes like this, the repeatability and reproducibility ratio of 8.3% of process tolerance using the X bar R method is obtained. Now what is your conclusion about this gauge? Now in order for you to answer this question, you may not necessarily need to know what is an X bar R method. There are two different ways in which you can perform the gauge R and R for variable data. One is the ANOVA method, the other is the X bar R method. While this is not important for you to answer this question, it may be good for you to know that there are these two methods. Now coming specifically to answer this question, the options that we have are, is the gauge acceptable? Is it marginally acceptable? Is it not acceptable? And we need to split the repeatability and reproducibility values before we even comment about whether the gauge is acceptable or not. Now, what do we mean by 8.3% of process tolerance? So the variation which is there in the process because of the gauge, that is the repeatability and reproducibility related variation of the gauge is 8.3% of the total process tolerance, how much of our variation is there in that particular process. Against that variation, we have 8.3% as the total repeatability and reproducibility variation. Now, there is a rule of thumb which you need to know without which you cannot answer this question. If the ratio is less than 10, then we have a good condition to accept the gauge. So the gauge is right away acceptable. It's logical, right? Only one tenth of the total variation is coming from the instrument. So the instrument is good. So we can directly approve the instrument. On the contrary, if this value is anywhere between let's say 10 to 30%, then the gauge is marginally acceptable, which means we have to cautiously proceed, but we can still continue to use the gauge. However, if the variation from the gauge is as high as 30% or more than that of the overall variation, which means the gauge itself is contributing substantially to the problem. For example, if you're measuring the temperature using a thermometer and the variation which is there in the thermometer itself is huge enough that at one point of time it shows that you're having high temperature, another point it's showing that you're uh, pretty cold then the problem is not with your body, the problem is actually with the thermometer, right? So if the variation is large enough, then we would not accept the gauge. Anything greater than 30% is not acceptable. Now, the fourth is just a twister. I think that's not even needed. That's not even an option that we need to consider. We don't look at the repeatability and reproducibility values separately in order to accept the gauge. Uh, we, of course, look at these values separately to deep dive and understand what kind of problem is there in the gauge. But as such, if the overall variability of the gauge is only 10% or lesser than that of the total variation, then we would right away accept this gauge. So the answer is A.